advice. An important survival tool for any illness is to be well informed. Consultant gynaecologist Dr. Anil Sharma joins me now with some good advice about ovarian cancer. Nice to see you. Yeah, I need you. How common is it? Um, it's probably of the order of like 1% to 2% of women in general for their whole lifetime. Um, you know, 1.5% probably. Yeah. Yeah. Can you screen for it? Uh, screening has been a bit of a pain in the past. They've looked at it in detail in, in the US and, and the good old UK. And the problem with screening is that the test that we've got, and there's a blood test and a scan, mm. the trouble is they pick up too many other things. Oh. So when they've looked at the studies in detail, the problem was that too many patients were ending up with unnecessary operations. So in the big scheme of things, sort of to pick up one case of ovarian cancer, you probably ended up with 60 or 70 other operations. Oh, crack, is that right? So not just cost-wise, but effective, effectiveness-wise, it just isn't considered to be viable. Yeah. What are the symptoms to look out for, and at what sort of age might they yeah. strike? The, look, the worst things about it, Jeanette, are that it, it is a very difficult diagnosis to make. The, the symptoms are all very vague. The ovaries are nicely hidden. They, they start off just being about that big each. Yeah. And so there's a lot of potential for growth there be before it becomes obvious. And if you're going to grow a, a benign ovarian cyst, then that's one thing. It doesn't matter if it gets really big. And we've talked about this before. But if you're growing a tumour, by the time it's picked up, it's, it's usually spread. And you're going to get the same symptoms, for, whether it's benign or malignant? The same type of symptoms. And the trouble is you get the symptoms quite late. Right. Um, there's a great acronym that the New Zealand Gynae Cancer Foundation has called BEAT, B-E-A-T, yeah. which is useful, I think, but not the be-all and end-all. I mean, the main thing to, to, to really sort of bring home is that if you've got bloating that's persistent, that doesn't just come and go, if you've got discomfort, if you you know your clothes don't fit you as well as they did, and you're just uncomfortable, um, and you feel quite full up quite early, and when you're having a meal, then go and talk to your GP, and that's what BEAT stands for. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, so it is at that point that you need to go and see. Somebody. Go and see your doctor, get an examination done. How is it diagnosed? What will they do? They'll probably start off by doing an internal exam. Um, and then lead on to an ultrasound scan. I guess the thing is, I mean, it, it's very difficult in this job sometimes because you don't want everyone to become ultra paranoid about everything. No. Because in the big scheme of things, it's unlikely you're going to have something serious. But if you really are convinced that something isn't quite right, just it's important that your healthcare provider actually does a thorough checkup, and that would include at least an internal examination and maybe then lead on to an ultrasound scan. Okay, so if, yeah. if the news came back and, and it was positive in mm -hmm. so far that, that they'd found something, yeah. what's the next step? Well, your GP would send you to a specialist, mm -hmm. um, either in the public hospital or privately. Um, the specialist would need to see what we were dealing with. We'd get a lot more information about it. Sometimes we might arrange a much more detailed scan, like an MRI scan or a CT scan, and then it would lead to surgery. At this point, they wouldn't know whether it was malignant or benign? No. 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 Okay. You'd have some clues, Yeah. Um, depending on... The, 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 the sort of crux of it is that when they look at ovarian cysts, we call them either simple or complex. And we look for certain issues in them that make them complex. We worry more about the complex ones. And even though I've said that screening isn't great, for the patients who come with ovarian cysts, we do the blood test. Mm -hmm. It's called CA125. If it's raised, it worries us a bit more. We then le it leads on to surgery usually, and that's when the diagnosis is made. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are the treatment options? The treatment, the, the the mainstay of treatment is to remove as much of the disease as you can. So whether it's a benign ovarian cyst or a or a malignant one, the cysts need to go. Yeah. If there's a good suspicion that it's malignant, usually a hysterectomy at the same time to remove the womb and the cervix because it often spreads that way. And also there's a, a big sheet of tissue that we all have, men and women. It hangs down from our stomach up here. And it's just this sheet of lymph tissue. It looks like a, um, it looks like a big fatty placenta. <laughs> um, and it, it sort of, um, tumour cells and infection goes to it quickly. So if there, if there is a suspicion of tumour, we take that so that we know if it's spread to that point. Right. Um, it does affect women of all nationalities and it can affect women of all ages, but it tends to be a problem 
that's more common after the age of 45. I was just going to say, because if it affected, if, if you had this when you were, you know, in your 20s and you yeah. hadn't had children, yeah. and you've had a full hysterectomy. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the end of that. And th luckily, the types of, the majority of the tumours occur in women who've already completed their family. And there is some um, research that says that having kids, uh, actually having pregnancies... Is a good thing. Is a good thing. Yeah. And, and, and having, being on the contraceptive pill, is that Having it? been on the pill, yeah. Right. We, th we think it's something to do with the fact that when you're pregnant for nine months at a time or when you're on the pill, you're not ovulating. Mm -hmm. So the longer in your life that you're not regularly ovulating, the protection kicks in a bit more. Right. Yeah. If you do get into it, onto it early, what's your outlook? If it's the earlier it is, the better the outlook. Yeah. I mean, uh, once in a blue moon, you'll pick up, uh, you'll take out an ovarian cyst, thinking it's all benign, mm. and it will come back as an early cancer. Right. And that's obviously fortuitous and, and a bit of good luck to actually be in that scenario. The problem with, with the disease is that sometimes, and this is, and this is a real, real problem, sometimes even with malignant cysts, uh, examination doesn't lead to diagnosing them. Yeah. And you can miss that too. Yeah. So I guess at the end of the day, you need to know your body and go chat to the doc if you're worried. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Nice to see you, Anil. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've put helpful links and notes on our website, and we can't emphasise enough. If you are worried, please do get along to see your doctor. Rod. Thanks, Jeanette. Now for some